any female in the reproductive age group reproductive age group whenever there is whenever, whenever she misses a period misses a period period as in the menstrual menstrual period whenever she misses a period the first thing to be ruled out is pregnancy pregnancy because that is the most common causes of miss period in that particular age group so beta hcg is that particular test today we discuss about beta hcg beta hcg beta hcg testing which helps in the diagnosis of the pregnancy beta hcg can be tested in to either in the blood or in the urine beta hcg can be tested either in the blood or urine both of them has has their own advantages and disadvantages immediately whenever they miss a pregnancy and when the female thinks there is a chance of her getting pregnant obviously the first thing they are going to do is a home pregnancy test the first thing they are going to do is a home pregnancy test urine pregnancy confirmation is a, is a very easy test it is a very easy test all you got to do is like you, you buy a car you purchase a card in any supermarket and what you do is like you add a couple of drops of urine on it and if you get only one line what it says like and you, you, you if you get only one line it is a negative and if you get two lines it is a positive this is as simple as it you get you get a single line one line is negative two lines is positive positive for pregnancy sometimes there is a strange scenario what happens is like there may be a faint line faint line faint second line the second line over here it may, it may not be clearly positive it, there will be a faint line yes. so what exactly is scenario here here we are not sure not sure in the sense like there are some limitations of this particular card usually this card cannot detect any levels less than 25 international units per liter any 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 levels below uh, less than 25 international units per liter it cannot detect this particular card so in order to in these scenarios what happens is like blood test comes to your rescue blood test comes to the rescue so so what do you do is like you give a sample of the blood and we test for the levels of the beta hcg in the blood major advantage of blood test is it is a quantitative test quantitative test quantitative test in the sense it gives a number just like any your glucose levels it gives a number like say, say this this female's beta hcg levels are like 10000 or 20000 or 30000 it gives a number it that's what you call it as a quantitative another thing is most significant thing is like it is it picks up as low as 1 one one micro international unit per liter it picks up as low as one micro international whereas the urine pregnancy it won't pick up until and unless it is 25 25 micro units with the major advantage is like you know say say you have a female here she misses a period on this particular day day one day one uh, she is supposed to get a period in this particular day and she missed his period and one day has passed if you do a blood test in this particular time the chances of her showing some result are very good blood test will give you some value if it is a positive for pregnancy this blood test will pick up even on this particular day whereas if you do an urine test may not urine test may not urine test may not you just need to wait for like you know one more week or so for the urine test to be strongly positive you just need to wait for not one week more like something like four to five days five days for the urine test to be positive five days let us see why this beta hcg is highly sensitive for detecting in the pregnancy and what is the specific function of role of beta hcg role of this particular hormone beta hcg so what exactly happens is like here here we have an egg over here and say we have a sperm 
Swim around here. So at the time of fertilization, what happens is like this. There are some millions of sperms will be produced, will be charging towards the egg, and only eventually, I think, uh, one egg will be piercing the egg, and fertilization will be happening. This is this is what we call it as an embryo. Where does this fertilization occur? This fertilization occur in the fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. And this embryo, what happens is like this, this. This is supposed to be. This will be grown into a few to fetus or a fetus baby. So this this embryo will be gradually. settling down in a uterus say this is a uterine cavity these are the fallopian tubules over here these are the fallopian tubules and this is the uterine cavity so this embryo over here this will be gradually settling down on the walls of the uterus this particular procedure what we call it is implantation implantation so whenever it implants on the uterine cavity the major the the one and the most significant function is like this this one needs to grow right so what happens is like we need some specific hormone by name progesterone 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 is a major nutritive hormone which progesterone is a major hormone which makes sure about which makes sure all the uh, all the things which are responsible for the uh, nutrition are provided by this particular hormone basically it helps in the sustaining the pregnancy it is the single most hormone which helps in the sust sustainability of the pregnancy so what exactly is happening here as and when this particular embryo is as and when this uh, embryo is getting implanted implanted this outermost layer of this thing what happens immediately it will secrete beta hcg beta hcg this hormone say we have ovaries beta hcg what this beta hcg will do is like this beta hcg will eventually it will stimulate the ovaries over here this is ovary imagine this is ovary and this will stimulate the ovary and this ovaries will in in turn release progesterone so this is the way this is the way that uh, beta hcg is functioning over here this beta hcg will stimulate the ovary to produce the progesterone and this progesterone hormone will help in the sustaining the pregnancy so beta hcg levels are seen in the circulation immediately after implantation as and when the implantation is done immediately after the implantation the outer layer of this particular embryo will be secreting beta hcg that is why this particular hormone is helps us in the diagnosis of pregnancy as early as possible. Let us see how the levels of beta HCG vary during pregnancy. Say this is the normal length of the menstrual cycle of 28 days and uh, this is the day 1 of the cycle and the day 14 and day 28. Day 14 of the cycle is supposed to be when you have this actual ovulation happens ovulation happens the chances of ovulation is usually around 14 days and uh, they say it's like plus or minus two days of this particular day say this is 12 and this is 16th so usually 12th to 16th days is supposed to be considered as a fertile zone of the cycle this is the fertile zone like whenever the chances of getting pregnant in this particular period from day 12 of day 16th of the cycle the chances of getting pregnant are very high so say say uh, there is a successful pregnancy in this particular period in this particular person so when do you actually see the beta hcg levels beta hcg levels will actually seen in the urine after 
eight to nine days after ovulation eight to nine days after ovulation in the sense in the sense here this is the 14th day the ovulation has happened and say this is 23rd day so you start seeing the levels of beta hct in the urine at, at around 23rd day even before the missed period also but the thing is like the levels will be very low very low and the results are not clear and the results are not clear so they start see, they will be seen in the urine around 20 23rd day itself and it's very interesting to see how the levels will be increased in pregnancy the levels once once they start there will be a steep rise exponential growth of the levels of hct and then again they reach they gradually taper off and they reach a plateau and this peak is reached around 9 to 11 weeks of missed period 9 to 11 weeks of gestation at 9 to 11 weeks of gestation you will see this particular uh, rise and around 16 weeks 16 to 18 weeks 16 to 18 weeks what happens is like the levels gradually they reach a, they reach a steady state and they'll come totally down immediately after pregnancy so the significant thing over in this particular graph is like there is a thing called as doubling time this particular phase like you know the levels raise after every two days doubles after every two days doubles after two days and what we call this as doubling time doubling time this is very important because any sustainable pregnancies all sustainable pregnancy you need to see that exponential growth say you have tested on this monday and your levels are like say 200 200 and if you are again testing on wednesday wednesday the level should be i expect healthy pregnancy level should be like you know at least 400 this is what this is what we call it so it took two days two days for the levels to increase and this is a healthy pregnancy so many people ask me like you know so um, uh, my my blood test levels are today are done like you know 40 or 50 is it a positive for pregnancy or like usually we suggest we suggest to check the blood test again in these kind of scenarios because ideally what we need to do is a doubling time so this doubling time as long as the doubling time is present it it should be indicative of a normal normal pregnancy normal healthy sustainable pregnancy and another another most common cause we cause is like so we uh, and say say if a patient is around like six weeks six weeks uh, what, what should be the levels of my beta hcg levels at six weeks there is no point of checking beta hcg levels you just you can directly go to the ultrasound testing ultrasound testing ultrasound scan in the, where in the ultrasound you you will be seeing gestational sac gestational sac for the diagnosis of pregnancy at six weeks usually we don't recommend any beta hcg because you can basically see the things in ultrasound ultrasound itself some some doctors even prefer five weeks also where you can do a transvaginal ultrasound also can detect the gestational sac but usually some will prefer to wait till six to seven weeks to get for the confirmation on the ultrasound where you can see the fetal heartbeat and the gestational sac also around seven weeks seven to eight weeks so th this is this is the significance of the doubling time over here I hope this video is extremely helpful to you basing on my experiences like majority of the questions will be coming only on this single test which is a beta HCG and we do see how anxious the uh, persons will be before and even after taking taking the test and uh, we we totally understand it and if you have do have any queries please do post in the uh, in the comment section and experts will be happy to answer as many questions as possible starting from this week we are posting exclusive videos of all the tests which are getting done in pregnancy and so so please do follow our channel and um, if you are planning to support us in any other way on patreon or through um, paypal please check the description in the please check the description links are provided in the description uh, and please do like share and subscribe